if you're my age or older, I'd say maybe 10 years younger. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage channel. The channel for everything Honda Goldwing. If you are passionate about the Honda Goldwing or if you just love motorcycling in general and you're interested in DIY tips and tricks and accessory installation and review videos, motovlogs, well, that's what we do here. So I'd appreciate it if you would uh, click on that little subscribe button down below. And if you do, YouTube will notify you. Or if you click on the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Now, I'm leaving my morning coffee routine from Einstein Bagels. You'll notice I'm going a little bit different route. Or maybe you don't notice. <clears throat> And that's because I'm leaving a little later this morning. It's about 7.35. And the traffic uh, will not allow me to get out and cross the street like I normally do. So I have to kind of go a different way, make a U-turn, get up here to a traffic light. And then I can get on my way back home. So in my last motor vlog, I went off on a little bit of a rant about Frontier and Spectrum. And I asked you in my last motor vlog, do you want more of these rants or do you want less or none at all or whatever? And I was really shocked by the response I got from you guys. And I appreciate all of you that did respond. Most of you said you liked the rants. I was kind of shocked by that. I thought some of you would be kind of offended or pissed off or whatever. But anyway, so today I'm going to do a mild rant. It's not going to be a real passionate one, but I'm going to give you something mild and I'm going to update you on my experience with YouTube TV and Fios and Spectrum and all that stuff because I'm still kind of fighting my way through it. And then I got some Goldwing stuff I'm going to talk about later in the video that you want to make sure you stay tuned to watch and get that information. But anyway, my goal in uh, getting Fios in the first place, the fiber optic, was that uh, my plan was to get away from DISH. And I wanted to go to a streaming uh, video system like YouTube TV because I'd read a lot about it, watched a lot of videos on it. And so I signed up for YouTube TV, you know, maybe four days ago. And we've been testing it. And after four days, I think we're probably going to stick with Dish. Even though I'm paying about 125 bucks a month for Dish. And YouTube TV is only $50 a month. Um there's just some things about YouTube TV I'm not crazy about. Now, the first time, let me back up. The first way I tried YouTube TV, a guy thought he was going to run right out in front of me. The first time I tried it, I tried it with Chromecast, which is Google's interface for streaming television. And we plugged in Chromecast, gave it a try, did not like it. And the reason I didn't like it is because it you have to use your cell phone to control everything. So your cell phone kind of becomes the remote control. And I guess I'm just old fashioned enough to where I like a remote control. I don't want to have to have my cell phone there to use for remote control. So the next option was to try Roku. So I bought the Roku Premier or Premium. I can't remember if it's Premier or Premium. It's their next to highest level. I hooked it up and it comes with a remote control. <laughs> a 
a little frustrating. I'll get into that in a second. But anyway, the, the interface for Roku, I actually like. I thought it was pretty nice. We got YouTube TV installed as one of the apps on Roku. And we began trying out and testing YouTube TV. And when it works, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. It's got an attractive interface. But the interface for what we do with television is not quite as robust as Dish Network. Now, if you look on YouTube and you want to watch some videos on YouTube TV and reviews on YouTube TV, and this is the frustrating part. These reviews are all from Millennials or Gen Z. And I don't think they've ever had a traditional DVR type TV or they, they're certainly, you don't see any comparisons online to YouTube TV to Dish or YouTube TV to Frontier DVR or anything like that. All you see is comparisons of YouTube TV to something like Hulu TV, which is another streaming service. Well, that doesn't really help me because I'm trying to decide if I want to stick with Dish or go to YouTube TV. And after my three or four days of testing, we've decided for now we're going to stick with Dish. And I'm going to do a video, and I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel comparing the Dish interface with the YouTube TV interface. And from an interface standpoint, YouTube TV is okay, but it has some shortcomings. For example, when you're looking at the TV, the guide for live television, all your different networks, you can only see a few hours ahead on YouTube TV. Whereas with Dish, you can see several days ahead. You can actually uh, scroll up to six, seven, eight days ahead. So if there's a program you want to watch or you want to record that's three days from now, it's much easier on Dish to go to that program and set it up to record. On YouTube TV, it's a little clunkier. You have to kind of search for the show. You have to know the name of the show, so you have to search for it. And then you can set it up to record or add what they call add to your library. So there's just some little interface differences. I could live with it probably for me, uh, but Ricky did not like YouTube TV at all. She just didn't like the interface and how it worked. I guess she's used to Dish. The biggest problem I have with YouTube TV is it crashed on us several times. We would click on a program on the live TV to watch and uh, you just get this spinning ball like it's trying to load the program and then the screen would go black and it would stay that way for several minutes and none of the other buttons on the remote would work other than going back to the Roku homepage and restarting YouTube TV. And this happened to us several times with different networks. Now to their credit, I contacted YouTube's uh, tech support and they got right back to me. I will have to say they, their support was good. The guy got right back in. He went through the typical, you know, reboot everything, reboot your Wi-Fi router, re, you know, disconnect the Roku, plug it back in, all that stuff. And I did all that. Reinstalled YouTube TV, deleted it, reinstalled it, did all that. And we still had the problem. And we've got good Wi-Fi. We've got a good 5G Wi-Fi, actually. So I know it's not my Wi-Fi, and of course I got 500 up, 500 down internet, so I know that's not the problem. And Netflix through Roku seems to be working fine. It never crashed. So it apparently is a YouTube TV issue, uh, one that I don't care to deal with. So for now, I just don't think it's mature yet. It's just not ready yet. Now let's talk a little bit about that because you see all these glowing things about it on YouTube and on the internet. You know, all these kids are switching to YouTube TV. And it is cheaper, I'll give them that. For now, it's cheaper. And part of it, I think the appeal is to the millennial and to the Gen Zers who have never had quality. They've never, ha they've never experienced reliable television. So they don't know any better. To them, if it crashes every day, that's just normal. 
that's just the way it is and they would look at me and they would say you're just an old fuddy-duddy and you're too picky and uh, you your expectations are unreasonable and I'm sure it's very similar to the you know if if for I'll, I'll relate it to this if you're my age or older I'd say maybe 10 years younger you know what it's like to make a phone call and be able to hear a person on the other end of the phone uh, the millennial and the Gen Z or they've never used a landline so to them they grew up on cell phones so to them it's normal for calls to get dropped it's normal for not be able to hear the other person on the other line and have to go around saying can you hear me now can you hear me now can you hear me now you know but we grew up in a time where you had a landline old technology and you could actually hear the other person on the other end of the line. You never had a call dropped. It was perfect phone calls. You could call from here to China and you'd have a better phone call than you do on a cell phone to someone three blocks away. But they're used to it. Now, so all this technology, I swear to God I live in the noisiest place on earth. <laughs> I've either got leaf blowers or concrete saws or it doesn't matter sorry so this is kind of the world we live in now we live in a world of high technology with poor quality all this technology all these advancements haven't done anything to improve the quality of our experiences they've only may in some cases they've lowered the cost not in all cases some cases they've raised the cost you know it's the world we live in now so I have voice over IP with Uma and uh, you know it, it it's okay it's not as good as the old landline uh, now that we have the 500 up 500 down internet speed I think it's better than it was with Spectrum with Spectrum it was terrible we had a lot of latency uh, it still sounds a little bit like a walkie-talkie where if the other person's talking and you start talking, uh, it, it doesn't work. It's, it, it doesn't have that ability to do a two-way conversation very, not like the old landline did. It's like it's, it mutes them when you start talking and mutes you when, they, when they're talking. So, this voice over IP, I've never seen one that's that great, but it's okay it's cheap that's the only thing I can say it's relatively cheap so put in the comments down below what are your experiences with all this streaming and YouTube TV I think one thing we might do is we might put an HD antenna in our attic and start getting some of this stuff over the air the problem with that is then you can't record it you don't have the DVR capability unless you get I guess a TiVo or something like that so there, right now, for me, there is no perfect solution. It's amazing to me with all this technology. I, I'll, I'll give you another one. Let's go back to the Roku. So we're sitting there with this remote control. And let me ask you a question. Here's my rant. If you want to hear the rant, here, here it comes. So for those of you that get triggered by my rant, uh, turn, turn the video off right now. Why the hell do they make a remote control without a lighted keypad? in this day and age why doesn't every remote control have a lighted have lighted buttons so you can see them in the dark are we the only people that watch TV at night when the room is dark do all of you keep all your lights on or do you keep a flashlight by the table so you can see the remote control and of course the remote controls all black buttons on a black remote so you can't see a damn thing why in this day and age and if you look, go, go Google it, lighted remote control. You'll find 10,000 people asking for a lighted remote control. Everybody wants one. So why don't these companies put a lighted keypad in the remote control? It can't be that difficult. So, you know, if you agree with me, put it in the comments down below. I want to I hear your views on this. Now, let's talk about the Goldwing and something coming up this Sunday especially for those of you that ride a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing GL1800 or F6B you have the fifth generation Goldwing or F6B 
we are going we are putting our we're going to have let me start over we're gonna for one day only on Sunday we're gonna have the best price we've ever had on our Goldwing maintenance videos but it's only for the fifth generation Goldwing or F6B and you have to go to our YouTube channel or, or better yet go to our Facebook page or go to the glforum.com if you want to find this deal. I can't tell you about it because it's only for one day. I will put out a short video on my Facebook page describing the deal, but I'm telling you right now, this is the best price we've ever offered. We're only going to do it for one day. And it's only for the 2001 to 2017 Goldwing. And it's this Sunday, September 29th. So, if you're if you ride a fifth generation and you want those videos Sunday will be the day to get it now I have some more good news to report last week we topped 18,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel that's very exciting for us uh, or me I say us a long time a lot of times it's usually it's just me and Ricky but uh, I use the royal we a lot. So, 18,000 subscribers, that's pretty exciting. We'd like to get to 20,000 before the end of the year. So, please share this video with your friends. Share it on your Facebook page. Share it on your YouTube channel. Put it in your emails, whatever you do. We'd appreciate it. And, one other thing. We had a ton of people join our Facebook page. Uh, maintenance group last week after I talked about it on the video and we have well over a thousand members now on the Facebook uh, Goldwing maintenance group so check that out so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the little bell icon if you want YouTube to notify you of new videos coming up soon Lots of cool stuff coming. Got some new products coming in in the next week or two that I'll be reviewing on my motor vlogs. So watch for that. And I'm just almost home, so I'm going to say goodbye. And thank you for joining me today on Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs.